As you may have noticed during the last section of the course, a person-centered approach built on individual patients' view and wishes is essential in the management of older patients with chronic kidney disease. Therefore, functionality and the individual capacity to manage the daily needs in practice become essential when working with older patients and chronic kidney disease. Partners from University of Erlangen, Germany will explain to you how to test functionality and mobility in more detail. Welcome to the video of the importance of physical functioning in older persons and especially in chronic kidney disease persons. And in the second part of this session, uh, I explain uh, about the possibility of obtaining physical functioning. What do we know? We know, for example, that life expectancy is not unfortunately congruent with healthy life years. So in research, one of the questions is, which are the component of having an impact of this uh, unhealthy life years? One of the components which is coming more and more into the topic nowadays is actually physical functioning in older persons. How do we know it? There has been research about risk of mortality by Francesco Landi, and he demonstrated that it's not the number of chronic diseases which are responsible for an increased risk of mortality, but the chronic diseases with and in addition impairment in physical functioning as, or even disability. If this comes together, then there's an increased risk of mortality. So what do we know, for example, that physical functioning is having an impact on daily life and on life expectancy? And this even that the component of physical functioning is so important has been supported by a report by the WHO 2015, which has released the report on aging and health and integrated there the model of intrinsic capacity, putting the focus on physical functioning and functional abilities again. So what do we know with, the, with regard to chronic kidney disease and physical functioning? We know, for example, that unfortunately, chronic kidney disease is increasing the risk on decreased physical functioning as a systematic review 2013 has demonstrated. And the group of SCOPE, the European project, has published in 2018 a systematic review with the questions, are there differences in different, for example, phenotypes of physical function or different ray filtration rates, are they having a different impact? So this review demonstrated actually that there is a flower pot of measurement probabilities for obtaining physical functioning. And in addition, yes, it seems that chronic dis uh, kidney disease, the different stages are having an impact. So furthermore, what do we know at this stage? There are two new syndromes in geriatric medicine, which is sarcopenia and frailty. Sarcopenia, again, the, in, uh, the entrance point is actually low muscle strength, again functioning, and then mu low muscle mass, and then physical performance as gait speed. So physical functioning in sarcopenia is playing a huge role. And the other new syndrome in geriatric medicine is frailty, which is vulnerability in older persons to stressors, and again, Functioning is playing in, for example, the Linda Fried's model of frailty, a huge role with a decrease in strength, a decrease in gait speed by producing a low active physical activity level, having an, even an impact on nutrition. So as you can see, physical functioning nowadays is very important to obtain and to really identify older person, and especially with chronic kidney disease, to be able to point them to adequate intervention programs and to modify the decrease in physical functioning. Coming now to the 
uh, area of how do I obtain physical functioning. As I said, it's a flower pot with different tools for physical functioning. So we decided in scope, for example, to take the short physical performance battery, which is one of the most used uh, batteries to obtain physical functioning. Why? First of all, it has demonstrated very good reliability, very good validity, and even more, it has sensitivity to change. Meaning that if you put an older person to an intervention and you want to measure the impact of the intervention by pre post tests that the SPVB is able to measure the differences, which are really significant. So how is the physical performance, um, the SPVB, being used? One part is balance testing and different food positions. So you have side-by-side -side standing, you have semi-tandem standing, and you have tandem standing. Each position you should hold for 10 seconds. It's being measured and stopped, and if you hold 10 seconds, that timing is being translated into scores. So if you can't hold your balance for 10 seconds side by side, that would mean you're getting a score of zero because you have a very low um, balance, and that means you are probably more immobile than anything else. So if you hold your balance, for example, you follow up to the different stages in tandem stands for 10 seconds and you get a score of 4. So in total for the balance testing you can get it to a score of 4. The next component of the battery is actually the 4 meter walk. And the 4 meter walk is being performed twice. You would take the best timing and it's again stopped and the best a uh, kind of um, testing score is being used and translated again into scores. So for the gate speed, if you're very fast in your gate speed, you again would get a score of 4. And the last test, and of, as I said before, gate speed is function in, uh, function in older persons. It's taking a very um, relevant indicator of it. So the last component of the SPBB is the chair rise. You have your participant stand or patient stand up once with arm folded across the chest to see if he's able to get up. And then you let him get up five times and again you stop the time. And again the time he has been used, uh, he, he needed to get up five times is being translated to a score of four. So in total you can get 12 points. In the SPBB, meaning you're on a very high level of physical functioning, the lower the score is, meaning this, for example, between 7 and 10, these persons should be appointed to appropriate intervention programs for modifying their loss of physical function. So to wrap up, the take-home message for the assessment tools is all the physicians and especially medical staff, especially as, as I demonstrated that physical function in chronic kidney disease is negatively related, you should obtain physical functioning, hopefully with the SPBB in a chronic kidney disease persons. The SPBB is very valuable, but nevertheless, there are other tests out again, for example, the hand grip strengths, uh, but this test, you have to make sure that everybody in your setting is using the same protocol because sometimes hand grip is measured standing in a standing position, sometimes in a sitting position. So please make sure that if you use a physical functioning performance uh, tool, that everybody is doing the same thing. With this, thank you for your attention.